All right, Google Sheets has recently introduced something called named functions. And what that allows you to do is, say you have a very large formula, but you use it over and over. It's kind of a pain to remember how to type it out, right? And get it to work every time. Now you can take that formula, give it its own name, call it a named function, and then just reuse it by using just that name. So for example, here we have inventory detail. I have 100 lines in here and we're saying every month you do an analysis. So I've done it already over to the right. In this analysis, it's a long formula, right? So it's up here, it's using the query function. Let's say it took you a really long time to construct it. It took me a long time to construct this. But every month you do the same analysis. So whether or not it comes into this sheet as a new worksheet or you have a new file, you can call your named function and do this complex formula in just a matter of minutes. So I'll show you how to create a named function and we'll just start right now. And let's say we already have the underlying function created, right? Because it can be anything you want. So the specific one that I have, I just made it something that you might do often, but it's too complicated to, to type it out from the beginning every time. So this is the function. We will copy this to put it on the clipboard. And then we'll come over. Well, let me close this window. And then we'll come to the data menu and choose named functions. So that brings up a sidebar on the right. And you come down the first time you do it and you click add new function. And here you have a couple of empty input boxes. And the first one is that it wants you to name the function. All right, so we'll just call this one inventory value, INV for inventory and then value. So this name, there's a couple limitations on it, but some of the important ones are that it can't be an existing name, right? So you don't want to call it, well, you want it in this case, but sum or count or average. You can't start it with a number and it's going to make you do it uppercase, just like all the other functions. Uh, but this fits in with those rules. So inventory value, and then let's give it a description. So when we give it this description, I'm going to come out of this sidebar for a minute and I'm going to type sum. You're seeing the description here, sum a series of numbers. And when I do an open parentheses and I look at this help text, you'll see that in the about. So we'll type that here in the formula description. We will say, create a report with type of inventory, total price and average age. So we'll use this report to see how old our inventory is. And then the argument placeholders, this one's a little bit more obscure. Let's skip it and go down the formula definition and then we'll come back. So remember we had pasted, let me close this window for now. We had copied the formula that we want onto the clipboard. So now we're going to paste it into this box. So that's the formula that you never want to modify again, right? So you're going to get it in here. And then something interesting happens. Sheets finds a range that's in the formula, AE to E108. And you're going to click on that and it's going to suggest that you define it. So I'm going to say range. It's not going to be one cell. It's going to be all the source data for the inventory. So we'll say uh, range. And that put that up into the argument placeholder. So we don't have to do anything else there. And you can see in the formula that it replaced the actual range with something just called range. You'll see where these come up uh, when we get through this. For now, we're going to click next. It wants two more things. It wants you to, to kind of describe what the range is. So we'll say location of the inventory detail in an argument example. So well, what would that look like? We'll say A8 E108, which was the original range that we used. And we'll click create. So now that you see, we've only have one here and it's called inventory value. And if you had multiple, they'd be listed on the right hand side here. And you can see a little description. That's what you put in. And let's go down and use this. So remember before we had to type that query out, now we're just going to say INV. And something interesting is already happening here. So these are pre-existing functions that come up in this dropdown, but then your function that you just created will be here too. 
It's going to let you know that it's a named function and it has that description that you put in. So we will left click on that saying that that's what we want to use. And I've turned off my formula help here. So I'm going to, yours will probably just pop up. And these are all the parameters that we put in. So there's the placeholder. This is the name of the function, description, formula definition. And down here, it's the description of what that placeholder is. Okay, so nice and easy, right? So we know the range is the location of the inventory details. So we'll say A8 to E108. Was that off? That's all you do. So when you have a new sheet and you import this function, all you do is type out inventory value, give it that range, hit enter, and it does the same thing with far less work. The other new function that just came out is XLOOKUP. I'm going to link to a video right now. What it is is just a version of a lookup function that's far easier to use than VLOOKUP. So I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.